Hey, Kill in Denmark. Today I um, will ask you for some advice concerning uh, threading on uh, the lathe. Mostly I've done threading with the uh, taps and dies, but um, inspired by uh, Adam Booth, I tried to uh, make some some uh, threading uh, with uh, the lathe and. Um, my problem is that um, I have to put uh, the lathe in reverse when I've done the first cut and then I have to uh, reverse the machine without uh, disengaging uh, the half nut and I would be able I would like to be able to uh, disengage the half nut and then just uh, turn the, the carriage uh, back but uh, I have no uh, threading dial, so I think I, uh, I will have some problems uh, engaging the right um, place in the threading again. So I uh, took a trip on Google and found a lot of, lot of uh, literature and uh, theory about uh, threading and threading dials, uh, dials for lathe, but mostly imperial and ametric. Um, and I've uh, tried to measure on my lead screw and uh, I'm sure it's a metric lead, lead screw. Um, and uh, I'll try to show you uh, why I think that. I think um, what I have to find out is uh, how much pitch I have on the lead screw. And um, okay, you can measure it by taking one, but uh, that's not very accurate. So I I have decided to uh, to take ten threads and see how much ten threads. Uh, will move uh, the nut if I had a nut to set upon the lead screw and uh, now I know what it is the pitch so I have my caliper here on 60 millimeters and uh, if I measure from the end of this thread to the end of this thread there's 60 millimeters and I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 so that's uh, why I think my lead screw is is uh, metric, and uh, and it has a, a pitch of six millimeters. Um, I don't think I'm wrong, but if I am, then teach me. On the internet, I've uh, found some uh, some um, text here telling me that that. Uh, Thread dials uh, can't be used in the metric system, and uh, I simply don't get it. But on the other hand, uh, I'm a retired economic, so uh, what do I know about threading? Um, but I want to make a threading dial, and I think my lathe has a place and maybe had one, but I had it no more. I have it no more but um, I want to make one. So my question is how many teeth should I make on the the wheel that uh, will uh, turn the dial? And I have done, done some uh, calculations in in Excel uh, I want to show you. Let's be sure you know how uh, you know what I'm talking about when I'm saying I want to make a thread dial. I have a sketch here found on the internet. Uh, this is uh, my lead screw and this is uh, the ways where the carriage is uh, uh, running uh, back and forth. And what I want to make is this threading dial here. And my problem is how big should I make this gear? How many teeth? That's one question. Next question is, how many divisions do I have to make on the on the face plate or what we call it, 
up here. Let's see uh, my calculations, what I found out there. Um, it looks very, very big, and it is, but uh, let's focus. Up here, I have the pitch on the lead screw. That was uh, six millimeters. And uh, when I have this dial and watch the faceplate, for every turn this faceplate is turning, then the carriage is moving on the ways. How much is it moving? That depends on how many teeth I have on this gear. Not that uh, the gear directly is moving the carriage, but I'm watching the faceplate. And when the faceplate has turned one, then the teeth uh, is um, determining how long the carriage is moving on the ways. And I have tried different uh, numbers of teeth here, from 12 to 50. And up here I have how many millimeters the carriage is moving when the face place plate is showing that it's uh, turned one, one uh, revolution. If I want to make these types of thread in the metric system from four millimeters, I don't think I can make it three millimeter on this big lathe. Let's start with four millimeters. And I'm going in this uh, table here up to 68. And I found on the internet that the pitch on each of these, I know you can have different pitches, but I think this here is uh, the most common uh, of what I want to focus on, at least. Okay, if we then see for, ev for every uh, wheel, I have to make a wheel with 12, 13, 14, 15, and so on. Maybe I don't need them all. But uh, let's see. If I want to make a four millimeters, I can't use a gear with 12 teeth. I have to have one with 21 teeth. That's how I interpret this uh, table and these digits. How did I calculate them? Okay. If there's a digit in the table here. That's because this number here is divided into this number here and it's an integer. A whole bunch of threads can be made if the pitch is 0 0.8 and I have 72 millimeters to make it on, then I can make 90 threads. There's no uh, number here because it will it'll not give me a whole number. That's how I calculated this digits all over the table here. To me it seems like that I have to have some specific wheels, 21 teeth, and if I make a gear with 21 teeth then my threading dial can help me making threads for 4 millimeters for six millimeters and so on. Every time I have a number I can see out here which millimeter I can make with that gear. Next question. 
what if I want to make a form what which if I want to make a five millimeter thread then I have to have another gear with in this case 20 or 22 teeth and then I can with this gear I can make all these threads shown out here so um, I think maybe I'm wrong but I think I have to find some columns here where all two or three columns where all cells is numbered so that I can make all this kind of um, threads out here and I found out that these three wheels will give me the opportunity to make all the threads. The disadvantage is that if I just made a 10 millimeter and I now want to uh, make a 12 millimeter then I have to change gears. Is that correct? Or am I wrong? Tell me please. These three wheels will give me all the threading out here. In here, with a, a wheel with 30, uh, 35 teeth on it, would give me a lot more. Maybe I can switch this gear for one or two of these. But the problem is, if I want <laughs> If I want a, a gear with 35 teeth on it, it'll be uh, roughly 70 millimeters in diameter, roughly. Two and a half inch in diameter. And that's way too big, I think, for a wheel placed down here. These wheels here, 20, 21, 22 are only 30 to 40 millimeters in diameter, roughly. If I'm correct in my findings here, then I have found now that I need three gears, one with 20, one with 21, one with 22 teeth on them. And then I have to change if I want to make all the threads out here. Next question is, how many divisions shall I make on the face plate here? Or should I have three face plates when I have three gears? I don't get it. But I tried this. If I look at here, the wheel with 20 teeth, a 5 millimeter and a 6 millimeter. Is there anything common? I can have 150 threads on this piece that the carriage is moving. And I can have 120 if it's a 6 millimeter. Where is the division marks? And if I include all of these in the same face plate, where is the how many division marks should I have? And I think that's it's the biggest digit I can found that is divisible into each of these. And the only one I can get is two. So I only have two divisions on the face plate combined with this wheel. It sounds uh, wrong to me. But what I'm doing here is um, I'm combining the threads. Here I have one thread with one pitch and here I have a thread with another pitch. They start here 
and the first time they are equal in down here and let's say it's here there I should have could have a division mark the more threads I place the more difficult it would be to find where I should have a division that's why I think there's only two here there's only one here there's only one here there's 33 sorry 23 here there's four here there's five here there's 13 here is it right at all that these numbers down here tell me how many divisions I can have on the faceplate I'm stuck here but uh, if you can help me and uh, maybe you have a link to uh, some theory about metric metric threads then I would like to know thanks for watching